Good morning and welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. For our friends who are joining us via drive-in, if I could get a couple car honks to let me know you can hear me okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. And welcome to those of you joining us live via Facebook or listening on the phone uh, to our service. My name is Pastor Michael. I'm excited for you all to join us today on this third Sunday of Advent. It's the third Sunday of Advent already. This, uh, this season is flying by. Um, we have some announcements. I'm going to turn that over to Barb, and she's going to tell you all kinds of fun stuff. Good morning, and uh, I'm Barb McCarwich. I'll be the liturgist for you this morning. Oh, and it's so exciting. We've got so much good news to share. Um, we, Dave Munson emailed me and let me know that the Heron Valley Sunrise Lions Club is going to be giving the church a $300 check, which we in turn will turn over to Bishop Elementary so that they can um, use it for whatever families may be needing that little extra something, food, paying utilities, whatever. Um, and also, a big, huge thank you to Jim and Gilda Chai, who were up over the weekend and cleaned up the church, they've sanitized, they've cleaned the floor, they were busy little beavers, and we thank you too so much for what, what you do for the church. And then during the offering, um, I have a little basket that I'm gonna come out. If you would like to have a glow stick for the Christmas Eve service to uh, when you watch us on Facebook, I will be distributing those for the children. If you have children or grandchildren, we have a special stick for them. The lettering on the package says it's a snowflake. That's not true. It's the Star of Bethlehem, <laughs> and the children will have the Star of Bethlehem to uh, break, get the glow stick going in half. So I think that's it. I have uh, two quick other ones. Um, uh, Dorothy, if you are here with us uh, at the drive-in today, if you could pop in after worship, I've got something I need to give to you. Um, and then also, um, if you come in the front door, which are the doors we're going to try and keep everybody coming into the building uh, through as much as we can, uh, there's a sign asking you to sign in. There's a clipboard on the chair right there in the narthex when you come in uh, with a clipboard on it. If you could sign, or not really sign in, but print your name, the date, uh, phone number, uh, and the time in and out, um, that would be awesome. We want to make sure that in the event of any kind of issue where we would need to help with contact tracing, we're able to do that. Um, so that'll help us all be that much safer and better prepared. So um, if everyone can make an effort to do that, that would be awesome. Um, and that's all I got. It's all yours. Oh, okay. Next. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our call to worship, if you will join me in reading this responsively. The promised one of God brings good news to the oppressed and binds up the brokenhearted. We are witnesses, witnesses to the light, to light of Christ. Of Christ. The promised one of God proclaims liberty to captives and release to prisoners. We are, we are witnesses, witnesses to, to the, the light, light of Christ. Christ. The promised one of God comforts all who mourn and gives a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Rejoicing, Rejoicing always, praying, praying without, without ceasing. ceasing. Holding fast to what is good. We are, we are witnesses, witnesses to the, the light, light of Christ. Christ. And we'll open with our first hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah. 
opening prayer, we will read together. We thank, thank you, you, O God, God for all, all those in Scripture who have pointed to Christ, for your, your prophets, prophets Elijah and Isaiah, for other prophets, and for John. We thank you, too, for those in our lives who have pointed us to Christ, pastors and teachers, strangers and friends. Give us eyes to see him today among those who are oppressed, imprisoned, brokenhearted, or beaten down, and we will give our testimony to how Christ releases and sets free, how he turns ashes into garlands, how he repairs and holds up what was ruined, we, too, will point others to Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. And now we'll sing Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. have our Advent reflection, beginning with a reading from Psalm 126, titled, A Harvest of Joy, A Song of Ascents. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said amongst the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Talitha Arnold states that the psalm looks for signs of God's promise in dark and difficult times. It first finds them in the remembrance of things past, in the joy and the laughter the people knew when God brought them home from exile, and even their neighbors acknowledged God's mighty deeds on their behalf, as seen in verses 1 through 3. She also points out that, but Psalm 20 or 126 is not an exercise in nostalgia. The remembrance of things past has a present purpose. Recalling God's deliverance long ago leads directly to the call for God to use that same transforming power now. And Charles M. Wood suggests that the weeping sowers weep, let us suppose, because they are afraid. They are putting the seed into the ground under quite unpromising circumstances, not knowing what to expect. God will turn their tears to laughter. We might then imagine, not because they have been properly penitent or properly diligent, this is not a fable about ants, nor because they have grown spiritually through adversity, but because they are needy creatures and because God is God. I'd like you to take a moment and consider the question, what past memory brings you joy when you are struggling with dark and difficult times?
May the actions of today become a joyful memory in the future. Amen. I invite you to join me now in our prayer of illumination. Holy One, giver of life and light, as your word is read and proclaimed, illume our hearts and minds that by the power of the Holy Spirit, our lives may reflect God's glory. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11, the good news of deliverance. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastation of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their rec recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and then offspring among the peoples, all who see them, shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. At this time of year, the abundance of some and the need of so many stand in the marked contrast. As we bring now our tithes and offerings, may Christ's heart rejoice and the needs of others be tended. We will now collect our offering.
if you would join me now in our doxology. Gracious God, teach us to give thanks in all circumstances, for you are always with us. Thank you for the privilege of sharing what we have with others, of giving ourselves away in love, and of receiving the gifts that others share with us. With our whole spirit, or with our whole being, spirit and soul and body, we rejoice in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you would join me in a continued attitude of prayer. Holy God, as we look towards the end of this year, in the coming days and weeks, there is great anticipation and hope, not just of the coming of your Son, but in a turn in this pandemic. Too many lives have been lost. Too many are struggling and suffering. We ask so much of our healthcare workers. God, we lift them up to you as well as all of those who are in need of healing, whether from this pandemic or from cancer or some other illness or injury or depression. God, we ask that you would watch over them, guide them in all their actions. Let your healing touch flow through them. And may all who are in need of healing not just feel that healing touch, but experience healing in the moments when they need it the most. We also lift up all of those who are mourning today, whether they have lost a loved one because of this pandemic or for other reasons, losing someone we love from our lives is something that we as humanity struggle with greatly. We become attached to one another. We assume that the people who are around us will always be around us. But we know in the depths of our hearts and minds that there is something greater waiting for us than this life. We know that you will call us home to you in a place that you have prepared for us. God, I ask that your comforting presence and spirit would be with those who are mourning today. Help them to be reminded not only of the good times and the good memories of their loved ones who have gone on, but also to be reminded that there is more to come. We are a resurrection people. We believe in life after death. And the greatest of greatest things is yet to come. We also lift up all of our servicemen and women serving in the military as, and all those who work to keep us safe including our police officers and firefighters, our first responders and EMTs, and so many others. God, we ask that you would keep them safe and strong. We ask that you would touch their hearts and minds, guide them in their words and actions. And for those who are serving far away from home, we pray that they might be able to return home soon and we could begin to see an end of conflict in our world. We lift up our nation and every nation around this globe. There is so much going on right now. So many negative feelings, so much anger and rage and confusion and controversy. God, we pray for your spirit of peace. 
We ask that you would touch our hearts and minds that we might see one another the way you see us as beloved children of God. We ask that you would touch the hearts and minds of those in positions of leadership, whether of nations or states or cities or churches or other organizations, but inspire them to find ways to work together for the betterment of all humanity, not just a select few. All of these things, as well as those we keep quietly upon our own hearts and minds, we lift to you this day in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Old habits and new wrongs wear ruts through our lives and relationships. But God is able to restore us. Like water coursing through a desert, the waters of baptism flow through us, reminding us that we belong to God and are raised to a new life. If you would please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, you love justice. Why then do we persist in wrongdoing and every form of evil? You have have given given us the the gift of your spirit. spirit. Why then do we quench the spirit among us? You have have given us the words of the prophets and the word himself. Why then do we despise and ignore what we have heard from you? You have sent the light into the world. Why then have we loved darkness rather than light? Forgive us, restore us. Till and tend us as your garden until righteousness and praise spring up for the sake of Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Please take a moment now for silent prayer and confession. In Jesus Christ, the Lord has done great things for us. Even if we have gone out in tears, God brings us home shouting for joy. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. And now let us join together as we read, do our affirmation of faith. It's the Advent Creed by David Hopwood. We believe Believe in in God God, the the Father, Father, creator creator of heaven and and earth. earth. The The one who who is full of patience, who is is not afraid of silence, who who does does not need to fill each moment with with activity and noise. The one who is beyond bluster and and fury, and who who does not jostle for attention. We We believe in in God the the Son, Savior of creation, who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews, and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God who waits patiently for us, 
and and who who longs longs for us to to do do the same. same. Amen. And our next scripture reading comes from the first chapter of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks to all in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, But test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and the body be kept around and blameless in the the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. And we'll now be singing Once in Royal David City. Our third scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46b, which means the second half of verse 46, through verses 55. This section is titled, Mary's Song of Praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you please join me again in an attitude of prayer. Holy God, creator of everything, sustainer of the world, you existed before time began and will continue to exist long after the end of time. And while a year to us is probably no more than a second in your eyes, this year has been one that will be talked about for a long time amongst your children. From natural disasters to political unrest to calls for justice, for equality and the oppressed, to a global pandemic that has turned our lives upside down, there is nothing normal about this year, nothing that seems predictable or able to be expected. So much has been stripped away that for many of us, this does not even feel like the Advent season one where we excitedly anticipate the coming of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your help, O God, for healing, for strength, to be able to rise above the drowning waves of rage, confusion, controversy, and suffering and pain. We ask that you would continue to walk beside us during this extremely strange season of life that we find ourselves in. And now may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are, as I mentioned at the beginning of our service, the third Sunday of Advent, getting closer and closer to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And yet... They still seem so far away. During a time when we would typically be decorating and going to see loved ones, buying presents for one another and out in the stores or online, sharing delicious meals and seeing the beautiful reflections of lights in windows and in the eyes of the young and old, we instead are facing a very much different reality. This global pandemic has turned everything on its head. So many things that we would normally look forward to, we know that we cannot engage in this year. And I can honestly say that I think the lack of a holiday feeling has been darkly veiled over us since at least Thanksgiving, if not Halloween or even earlier for many people. And while rehashing and again mentioning the suffering and pain so many are experiencing may seem hard to deal with, I do genuinely believe that there is healing in naming pain and suffering. We do not have to pretend that everything is perfect or even okay. Because the truth is, everything is is not perfect and not even close. And I would argue that everything is even far from being okay. The first week of this series, we talked about the loss of community and how the community of being children of God will always keep us connected. Last week, we talked about the loss of health and life and how the word of God still gives us hope and promise and grace and love. Today, we are going to be focusing primarily on our reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, as I mentioned, also known as Mary's Song of Praise. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, how can there be anything being stripped away in the words of a song of praise? Well, I want to specifically look at verses 51 through 53, and I will show you what caught my attention. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the, th- in their th- in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So the way I read this, there are three main things that are being stripped away here. First, the proud are being scattered in the thoughts of their hearts. Second, the powerful are being brought down from their thrones and the lowly are being lifted up. And third, the hungry are being fed and the rich are being sent away empty. All three of these things are parts of traditions of the world at one point or another. 
Now, I don't mean traditions like we always put the nativity scene on the altar or up in this area of the church during Advent and Christmas. I don't mean traditions like how we always end the Christmas Eve service with singing silent nights and having candles. No, I mean traditions in the sense of systems of oppression and continually held ideologies that lead to the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. I mean traditions in the sense of lack of opportunity for all people to survive and thrive. It was tradition back in this time, and some would argue even still today, but at the very least back in this time period, that the proud were lauded. It was tradition that the powerful sat on their thrones, whether real or figurative, and held down the lowly. It was tradition back in this time for the rich to always have more than enough and for the hungry to starve many to their deaths. That is what I mean when I talk about these traditions are being stripped away. This is bad news for the oppressors, for those perpetuating unjust ways, for those who allow their neighbors to suffer when they themselves have more than enough. What about today? After talking about community and health and life, what are we faced with being stripped away right now in our world? Well, in a way, it's almost the same thing. Tradition. Except in this case, I am talking about the things like the nativity up on the altar or singing Silent Night at the end of the Christmas Eve service. I am absolutely now talking about gathering in our sanctuary with the lights dimmed, all holding candles or lights as we sing that beautiful hymn. Seriously, this, this is just not any fun right now. How many of you hold memories of decorating the sanctuary in other parts of this church? How many laughs and stories have been shared over the decades with your fellow beloved children of God. We cannot even safely gather in our sanctuary for worship. Tradition hasn't been just stripped away from us. It has been torn down, stomped on, and lit on fire. Some traditions can be bad and harmful, but these Advent and Christmas traditions that we are held away from are typically the ones that bring joy and warmth to so many people. I have another word for what I think of this situation, but it is not one that should be uttered aloud in public, especially by a pastor. But as in so many other places in Scripture, there is good news. There is hope. In the case of this passage from the Gospel of Luke, it is actually found in the very same verses that we talked about what was being stripped away. The proud being scattered in the thoughts of their hearts, the powerful being brought down from their thrones and the lowly lifted up, and the hungry being filled with good things while the rich are sent away empty. So while the bad traditions of that time are going to be stripped away by God, justice and love are what is left and what will prevail. And verses 54 and 55 also offer that he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The promises made to the ancestors, they are going to be honored. They will come to fruition. This might be one of the few situations we have talked about where What was actually being stripped away in Scripture was the kind of things that most of us would see as bad and would be happy are being stripped away. But what about our world right now? We have had our traditions for Advent and Christmas stripped away, so what are we left with? Well, even though we are not able to be in our sanctuary for worship, we can still celebrate. And even though we're not going to have a choir or a praise band, we can still celebrate. 
And even though we're not going to be using candles during silent night, uh, at least for many of you, especially those coming via drive-in, because believe me, I know from experience, the interior roof of your car is extremely flammable. But that is another story for another sermon. But again, we can still celebrate. We don't need all of those things to celebrate the birth of our Savior. They are nice, and it is not wrong to want to have them, to do them, and to be around it all in a normal year. There's nothing wrong with that. But we do not need them to still celebrate. We can still celebrate without candles, and I understand the irony of me saying that as I'm standing next to candles. We can still celebrate without choirs or elaborate special music. We can still celebrate outside of our sanctuary. Remember the saying from Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The thing about traditions is that they help us to remember feelings and experiences that have helped shape us throughout our lives. Traditions can help to honor those who are no longer with us, who we shared those special moments with. Traditions can help us to honor and remember the history of our faith and our God. Traditions can be an exceptionally good thing. But traditions can also be unbelievably bad things too. Traditions that oppress people are not good. Traditions that exclude people are not good. Traditions that harm people are not good. So traditions can be good or bad, but the things that we absolutely must have to celebrate are not the traditions. They are the very core of the celebrations themselves. I hate to sound kind of cliche here, but if you look at the message in the book and film How the Grinch Stole Christmas, you will see exactly what I mean. At the end of the story, there's a paragraph that speaks volumes of truth. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. Now, I don't mean to compare our desire for our Advent and Christmas traditions to the desire some people may have for presents. That is not my intention there, but rather to point out that Advent and Christmas are more than just the traditions that we have attached to them. Advent is about the anticipation of the coming birth of the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And in Christmas, we find the fulfillment of that promise. There is nothing wrong with missing the traditions that we have come to love that go along with these holiday seasons. But we do need to remember that Advent and Christmas are not dependent upon those traditions for them to occur. Advent and Christmas are not dependent on those traditions to still carry the same importance and same messages to us about God. I am right there with you wanting that elaborate special Christmas music with a bell choir and a full choir of singers and piano and organ and, and every other instrument you can imagine. I am right there with you wanting the candles during silent nights, all while sitting together in this beautiful sanctuary. One of the very best memories that I get every year is looking out at the congregation from this pulpit area during silent night. 
I can actually, for as bad as my memory can be at times, clearly remember every single silent night part of every Christmas Eve service I have done. Seeing that, that sea of lights and hearing those beautiful voices coming together is beyond my ability to put into words. But every year is burned in my memory and is like the final cherry on top of this season for me. But this year will be different. I know I will not get to have that image this year. But I also know it will still be Advent and it will still be Christmas. We can still celebrate. We can still honor and hold some of our traditions even still this year. This year will be different. But the meaning and the message of Advent and Christmas will never change. Advent will always be the time of anticipating the coming of the Savior. And Christmas will see it fulfilled, a sign of God's love and grace for the world. Amen. If you would join me in our closing hymn number 251, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Beloved children of God, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, witness to the light of Christ so that all might believe through him. Now may the God of peace call forth your complete dedication. May the light of Christ shine upon you and the Holy Spirit fill you completely now and forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.